Hello everybody, this is a Oliver number 9, an old typewriter from 1919. It uh, looks a little strange, and uh, in fact it is. It was also called Batwings typewriter or Elephant Airs typewriter. It hasn't the classic typing bars, but an arc with the typing characters in the middle. When you press a button, the typing bars goes down and the mechanism moves the ribbon fork. I think the mechanism is very nice. It's a typewriter with the direction of the typing bar on the down. It means the typing bar strikes the roller from above. This allows the typist to see what he is writing. In fact, this is one of the four typewriters allowing the text to remain visible at all times. In our times it is obvious to see what you write, but in those times usually typewriters didn't permit you to see what you wrote. So the Oliver was advertised as the standard visible writer. Here it says also it works in a whisper, but it don't seem so. The typing bar hit quite hard the roller. The typing bar are stored in two towers on the sides of the typewriter and become progressively larger as more were added. Since it's not possible to add much more typing bars, on every bar there are three characters and the keyboard is limited at three rows of buttons. Thanks to the fact that uh, the typing bar hit the paper downward, helped by the gravity, the typing bars hit the paper with considerable force, making a clear impression. Also, the force you had to use to type was less than other typewriter of the period. It also has two handles, you can use it to move the typewriter, or if you want to do some exercises when you are tired of being sit working at the typewriter. The color is olive drab. It's a color usually used for military device. I don't know why they use this color, but I think this typewriter was used mainly for civil use, as far as I know. Maybe it was a pun between olive color and Oliver typewriter. Could be they found it fun. This is the back, it's the bell mechanism. The Oliver's headquarters was in Chicago. The company was founded by the Reverend Thomas Oliver. In 1888 he started to develop his first typewriter made from a strip of tin cans. His goal was to write more legible sermons. Oliver started the sales network by encouraging customers to become local distributors. So the door-to-door -door sales and sales on credit were pushed. You see this announcement. Here it says to young men to take off the coat and go to work to sell typewriters, of course. You can become a Oliver local agent and earn a lot of money. Here the search salesman, $500 at those times means around $7,000 nowadays. It's a very good wage. These are the more common spare parts for different Oliver typewriters. Also here. The keyboard has hexagonal buttons. This is the button for major schools. And this is the button for symbols and numbers. This lever is a caps lock. This, of course, is the tabulator. The backspace is here. This is the left margin release. 
and this is the right margin release. You set the margin here with uh, the slider under the carriage. This is the ribbon fork with this complicated mechanism. This little button is to change the color of the ribbon from black to red. And with uh, this button you change the direction of the ribbon. This strange ring with the screw actually is uh, an interesting feature. You can insert a pencil here, you fix uh, with the screw, and you can draw lines uh, both horizontally and vertically. Or you can also draw something if you are good enough. It's a car with uh, square wheels. Uh, I invented it uh, when I was a child. This knob is to move the carriage back and forth. The same on the other side, but it's a lever. I insert a sheet of paper. This lever is if you want to adjust it. This wheel is to move the roller independently of the ratchet wheel notches to make a correction, center the letters on the line, etc. Here you select the interline. And the interline is quite particular. There is not a lever. You have to press uh, the knob of the main roller and after you hit the margin the selected interline is applied. You see? Again. For sure it's not a very standard typewriter but uh, seeing uh, something different from usual like this typewriter is always very nice. Thanks for watching.